What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, coming at you with a spoiler-free Splatter Talk Cinema review of the new Child's Play reboot. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You're late, Jay. Well, I wanted the movie to come out so I could watch it a few times before I came to my conclusion, but I also wanted to see the reaction of YouTubers because I knew, I knew deep down, I would be the black sheep. Let's get into it. Okay, Splatter Talk Cinema made a few rants about the Child's Play movie Universal was rebooting without the blessing of Don Mancini and company. While a lot of you guys said that it was going to suck, there were a few of you who were excited about the movie, so the movie dropped. I didn't go to the premiere, I waited. I watched the reviews of a few YouTubers and their links will be in the description, go check them out, they are amazing. And those guys were pretty, uh compassionate with their reviews of this movie. My opinion? This movie should not don the Child's Play title. I'm sorry, but I was thrown off the entire film. I'm not gonna completely bash this movie because it does have some good qualities about it. I love the lighting throughout the movie. I love Gabriel Bateman's portrayal of Andy. He was very convincing. By the middle of the movie, if the audience hadn't seen Chucky in action, I would have been asking if Andy was crazy too. He pulled it off. I like the fact that they introduced other kids who didn't become cannon fodder for Chucky. One thing I thought would have been a problem was the origin of Chucky. I can actually believe that a factory worker would go get pushed to the edge so much he would just defect the toy. I can unfortunately see that happening. I like the progression of Chucky through the movie, even though I hate how he got his name. I won't spoil it for you, but Kaslin is Skynet. Are you guys ready? Here is where the buck stops. We get introduced to Aubrey Plaza, who plays Andy's mother in the movie. Though she is great eye candy for the screen, I didn't believe her for one second that she was Andy's mother. I thought of her being like the older sister or something through the whole thing. Brian Tyree Henry... I didn't believe you either, brother. I love the chemistry he had with Andy, he just did not seem like a detective to me. Even though the kids in the movie were great, this movie seemed to be like a melting pot of Stranger Things, It, Child's Play, Annabelle, Terminator. Hollywood continues to go with the trend of just no originality. The deaths in the movie, even though they were elaborate, were kinda lame. It seems as if everybody was going for the gore effect instead of the horror aspect of the kills. In some cases, less is more, fellas. I also believe there was only one death that wasn't projected, but that death was pretty much spoiled in the trailer, so at the end of the day, all the deaths were telegraphed from a mile away. If you're an asshole, you're gonna die in a horror film. It's just simple as that. And how naive are the adults in this movie? Andy had that I'm lying my ass off look in his face through the whole movie, and nobody questioned him. Dairy parents are probably better than this. The look of Chucky was horrendous. I cannot believe that a movie in the 1980s would look more groundbreaking than a movie today. Chucky looked like a mix between a puppet from Puppet Master with the mouth of a South Park character. I could not stop chuckling to myself when I see his mouth move. I tried to look past all that to relish the voice performance of Mark Hamill. This man is a voiceover legend and the movie limits the shit out of him. Look at what this man has done with the Joker. He is actually considered to a lot of Batman fanboys and girls to be an actual Joker. Why wouldn't they let him give Chucky a sinister laugh or scream? Afraid you might not measure up to Brad Dourif? Hmm. The third act of this movie is probably the best, but you have to sit through a long, drawn-out series of events until you get there. Is it enough to save the movie? I honestly don't think so. And when you sit and watch this movie, it's like you're watching a movie about a killer doll that happens to be named Chucky, as opposed to watching a child's play movie. Did I expect it to be like the Don Mancini movies? No. 
because I feel the Don Mancini movie's vision is slowly sliding off the rails yet again. I'm gonna do a rant on the original Child's Play franchise soon. Overall, Child's Play 2019 was probably a way for Universal Studios to continue to hold on to the rights of the franchise. We've seen it before with Fox and that whack-ass Fantastic Four movie that they tried to make just to hold on to the copyrights of the characters. New Line Cinema did it the same way with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of Jason. In no way was Chucky scary or menacing like he was in the original. The believability of this movie was at an all-time low for me. And it's sad when you can believe that a toy got possessed by voodoo before you can believe that a toy can control a car. Get the fuck out of here. If you have not seen Child's Play 2019, don't. I mean, if you just want to have a good time and watch some movies in the background or whatever, wait till it comes out on DVD. If you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up, press that notification button and the bell so you don't miss anything Splatter Talk, and give us your opinion in the comments below. Did you like the new Child's Play remake or do you think they should have just left it alone? Well, this is Jay from Splatter Talk Cinema Review. You know what it is. It's a wrap.